So welcome to this week's tutorial. Tutorial 5. So let us see what we have. We'll try to solve a couple of questions uh, which are of relevance with respect to this week's lectures. So question number first is let us consider a general vector whose base is 0, 0, 0, that is origin and tip is at any general given point x, y, z, right, in the point group. So the overall environment of the molecule is in or of the vector is in the point group. C to H. I am picking up a relatively easy system, but you can work out similar problems in different point groups. Okay. So, how does it look? So, you have right handed coordinate system. So, you have x, y, z. Okay. And any given vector where origin is 0 and its tip is x, y, z. Right. And you know how to calculate the length of this vector and so on, right? So now let us start with the parts of this question. So this is what you have been given. Now what you have to do is derive the set of four, three cross three transformation matrices. that constitute that constitute the reducible representation by which let us call this representation as tau m by which the vector v transforms okay so what you have to do is you have to derive a set of four three cross three transformation matrices that constitute the reducible representation tau m by which this vector v transforms so this vector v transforms what do you mean by that so origin is supposed to be not changing so it is supposed to be fixed and only the vector tip is supposed to be moving under different symmetry operations. So what are the different symmetry operations under C2H point group? So under C2H we have E, C2, I and sigma H, right? So the C2 is along z-axis, C2Z. So now under each of this symmetry operation you have to uh, see what will be the transformation matrix so that it will define how vector v will transform. So how do we do that? So this is nothing but the unit vector transformation problem which we have already learned. So basically what the question is asking is that what happens if you, what will be the E matrix if I transform x, y, z. So this vector v can be written in terms of a column matrix x, y, z, where x, y, z are the coordinates of the tip of this vector and what happens to this after I transform it using E. So E does not do anything. So x, y, z remain as x, y, z. This implies that E is a unit matrix of order 3. So what I have is 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. So this is my transformation matrix. Okay. This can also be called as transformation matrix. So similarly, we have to calculate all the transformation matrices, all four transformation matrices, which will be three cross three order. Okay. So because we are in XYZ system, so that's why this will be three cross three 
order so basically the the dimension of the space in which we are it's a three dimensional space so that's why this will be three cross three but this can be multi-dimensional this can be lower dimensional than three so depending on in what dimension we are working the order of the matrix will change okay so now let's do the same thing for c to z for c to z if i operate c to z on to the tip of the vector that is my x y z now understand that what happens to x so if i go back to the picture here so if i do a c to z operation so my c2 is lying along z axis my x axis moves to minus x y axis move to minus y z remains at z right so that means this vector will change its coordinates as minus x minus y z okay so now let's write it down here so this is the resultant vector minus x minus y and z so this implies c to z can be written as so now you have to imagine a matrix which would multiply with x y z to give you this right so you must be very thorough with the matrix multiplication so now i understand that if i multiply minus 1 with x i will get minus x right so that means it will be minus 1 here and since x is remaining as x there is no other component in place of y and z so it will be 0 and 0 similarly y is multiplying with minus 1 to give you y suppose if there is a x component or y component or z component then i will have some numbers here also but since there is no x and z here only y so that means i will have minus 1 here and 0 and 0 here right now for z again this will be 0 and 0 and 1 right so this is my transformation matrix for c to z so you can also write the similar thing for a general so in general we can say let's write the general one c n z so any c n z matrix can also be written as that we have already calculated so mind you that the rotation here will be anti clockwise rotation because if you are using clockwise rotation the result will be different so this you have to keep in mind that all the rotations that we are doing in this class are anti clockwise so cos theta minus sin theta is 0 then i have sin theta cos theta 0 0 0 1 so z does not change so that's why plus 1 now if i put 180 degree cos 180 degree will be minus 1 so for c to z i can say theta is equal to 180 degree right so this will be 2 pi by 2 okay so if it is 2 pi by 2 you will have 180 degree or i can say 2 pi by n where n is equal to 2 right so because theta is 180 degree my cos theta is equal to minus 1 sin theta is equal to 0 sin theta is equal to 0 cos theta is equal to minus 1 so i get the same matrix here right so either you use the general formula or you actually do the transformation on x y and z and see where they are going either way you should get the same result so this is my transformation matrix for c to z okay now let's write down for i and sigma h now if i do i operation on x y z by definition i should flip all the coordinates so i should get minus x minus y minus z so now the vector basically is moved to the opposite quadrant in the three dimensional space so x goes to minus x y goes to minus y z goes to minus z so that means i is again a unit vector but with all ones as minus one zero zero minus one right? now for sigma h so if i do sigma h on 
what will be the orientation of sigma h that is important to understand so by definition it's a horizontal plane horizontal plane has to be perpendicular to the principal axis principal axis is c2z here so if perpendicular if c2z or principal axis is lying along z axis so that means my sigma h will be lying along xy right so if sigma h is lying along xy or xy axis are lying on to the sigma plane they will not change their sign right so x remains as x y remains as y and z changes its sign to minus z so if we go back again here so if this is my sigma my x y will not change the z actually goes down to minus z so that's how it changes to minus negative z right so once you have identified the final result all you have to do is now identify what will be the matrix which will multiply with x y z to give you x y minus z so now that is simple to find out because x is multiplying with 1 so i have there is no y component there is no z component in this column in this row so again you have 0 1 0 0 0 minus 1 now so my set of transformation matrices or my reducible representation i can write as c2h e c2 i sigma h now this is my tau m which is the reducible representation so i will say this is my which the question asked right reducible representation consisting of three cross three matrices so this is my so for c2 i have minus one zero 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 minus one zero 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 one for i i have minus one zero 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 minus one zero 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 minus one for sigma h i have one zero 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 one zero 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 minus one so this is my tau m which is reducible representation so that's how so you can also call it as set of transformation matrices under which vector v will transform in c2h point group now next is next part is reduce the tau m into component irreducible representations so we now know what is a reducible and what is a irreducible representation by block diagonalization of the matrices so now what you have to do is you have to block diagonalize these matrices so what do you mean by block diagonalize so what we have to do is we have to see if i can find out only diagonal elements so block diagonalize means that only diagonal elements matter and rest where the elements are zero it does not matter so i can see that this is my first element and this is my second so rest other elements are zero so this is the diagonal which is already block diagonal so similarly and it has to follow in all four matrices right so suppose if there is a number here let's say if there is a number one here okay in that case i would not be able to consider this minus one and this minus one as block diagonal in fact i will have to consider this two cross two matrix and if that happens i have to consider the two cross two matrix in all four cases okay so because it is zero in all the cases i can consider one cross one matrix in all of them as block matrices okay so i will just write zero back again so we have already discussed what is block diagonalization so once you do this now i can say that 
this matrix representation or this reducible representation tau m can be written as tau 1 plus tau 2 plus tau 3 okay so what do you mean by that where tau 1 is nothing but i will write first component here 1 minus 1 minus 1 1 so 1 minus 1 minus 1 1 so this one coming from here this minus 1 coming from here minus 1 coming from here so respective elements of all the matrices basically tau 2 again 1 minus 1 minus 1 1 so these two are same there is no dot here so for tau 3 this is now the third element which is 1 1 minus 1 minus 1 1 1 minus 1 minus 1 okay so now if you notice or let's not discuss that because we have not discussed mulligan symbols yet so we will do that later okay so these are the set of irreducible representations for c2h point group all right now what is the next part of this question so this is so write down write the reducible representation of characters of tau m matrix representation okay so what do you mean by writing tau m writing the characters of tau m matrix representation so characters means nothing but the sum of the diagonal elements okay now these sum of the diagonal elements are nothing but called as trace or character okay trace of the matrix or character so how do i write so let me just look at this these matrices so what i will have is tau let's call it as tau v tau v is so if i sum all the diagonal elements here what do i get 3 this will be minus 1 this will be minus 3 this will be plus 1 so i have 3 minus 1 minus 3 plus 1 right so these are the set of characters which are obtained from summation of the diagonal elements of the matrices now this is also called as a reducible representation because this can be reduced into these ones reducible representation of c2h point group as we know that there can be infinite different numbers of reducible representations so this is one of the infinite possibilities of reducible representation under c2h point group okay so that should be clear so now let's move to second question so now let's see consider 3p orbitals px py pz which are degenerate for an isolated atom let us call that atom as m so if you have an isolated atom the 3p orbitals would always be degenerate if there is no ligand or there is no surrounding atom to it right so p by degenerate i mean that they will have equal energy 
So by symmetry, they are forced to have equal energy. They are identical. So Px, Py, Pz orbitals would be identical to each other. And thus they will be degenerate in energy. They will have same energy. But now what happens if M is surrounded by several X atoms, the degeneracy of p orbitals is lifted. So if degeneracy is lifted, can we use symmetry arguments to say in under what molecular shape the symmetry forces uh, some of the orbitals to remain degenerate or separate from the other orbitals okay so by consulting the appropriate character table by consulting the appropriate character table describe the degeneracy of p orbitals in following molecules so now you are given some molecules and you have to describe whether the p orbitals will be degenerate or not okay how do we do that by looking at the character table so let us start looking at that so the first molecule is mx2 linear so but we should know which character table to look okay so for mx2 linear what will be the molecular shape molecular shape is like this right what will be the point group point group will be d infinity h okay now this is my point group now what you have to do is in the character table there are several areas in the character table okay that we will learn maybe in the next class so if you see character table d infinity h this area will be the symmetry operations listed various characters are listed Mulligan symbols, symbols for IR representations are listed, and here is the basis unit vector rotation as well as translational. So that is x, y, z, and rx ry rz are listed right and in this area binary products of unit vectors are listed binary products so now what you have to do is you have to see under this area this particular area so what how are my x y and z listed okay so let me just write down for one particular example and that will make it clear so let's go to next page so for d infinity h it looks something like this so there are several lines in the symmetry elements to c infinity and so on so forth okay so infinity c2 and so on so here Again, there are several symbols written. Do not worry about what those symbols are. We will get it clear in the next few classes. Sigma, G minus, and so on and so forth. Okay. So in certain area here, it will be written Z and it will be written here X and Y. So X and Y comma and within bracket means that this type of arrangement means that x and y are degenerate and belong to 
टू डायमेंशनल इरिड्यूसिबल रिप्रेजेंटेशन सो दिस वुड मीन दैट एनी प्रॉपर्टी दैट ऑल्सो लाइज अलॉन्ग एक्स एंड वाई वुड ऑल्सो बी डी जनरेट सो एनी प्रॉपर्टी दैट इज along x y would also be degenerate so z is separate from x y so suppose if z is also written as like that so that would mean that x y z all three are degenerate but that is not the case in this case z is separated from x and y this is purely due to symmetry arguments so this would imply that px and py orbitals are degenerate in mx2 linear molecule okay so that is very very simple just look at the character table find out whether x and y are written together within brackets or separately that would define whether px py pz orbitals are degenerate or not okay now let us see few more examples so next example is mx2 bent so mx2 bent so how would the molecular shape will be this is like a water molecule so you have mx2 the point group is c2v so now if i refer to the c2v character table it gives like so you have z here then x and y in three separate rows okay so z corresponds to some other some ir representation x and y corresponds to some other ir representation so that means x y and z are not equivalent to each other that would imply that px py pz are not degenerate there can be accidental degeneracy which is a separate thing but because of symmetry you can argue that because of symmetry arguments px py pz are not degenerate okay so this is for mx2 bent okay now let's look at more examples what is mx3 trigonal planar so if you screw up here in the point group determining point group of the molecule or the shape of the molecule then you will get a wrong answer right so if it's a trigonal planar how the molecule would look like this will be like bf3 all of them are in one plane so that means the point group is d3h so for d3h uh, d3h what i have here is xy and z are in separate rows so that means only px py are degenerate z is separated from px and py right so very very simple but very important application right just by looking at symmetry you are saying something about energy mx3 pyramidal so mx3 pyramidal is like ammonia so you have so this will be c3v point group so under c3v z coming here and xy coming here so this also implies px and py are degenerate right okay let's look at more molecules you have mx3 t shaped now what will be the point group of this t shaped molecule let's draw the molecule first so you have m x x 
x. So try to work out this thing as a home assignment. So I will leave some of those examples as home assignment. So you have mx3 t shaped. Then let's increase it mx4 tetrahedral. So all you have to do is just look at the find out what is the point group, look at the character table, look at the unit vector transformations, whether it is transforming together or separately. If it is together, it is degenerate. If it is not, it is non degenerate. So very, very simple. So tetrahedral MX4 can also have square planar. Can also have irregular tetrahedral. So this example we have not discussed, but I would like you to find out what is irregular tetrahedral and how does it, what will be the point group of that. Okay. So mx5 square pyramidal and then trigonal bipyramidal and last will be mx6 which will be octahedral find out how the symmetry of the orbital changes whether they'll be degenerate or not in all of these shapes okay so i think that will be all next class we'll discuss more problems thank you very much